This course contains the information you will need to pass the exam for Java Certified Programmer. This certification exam is intended for those who have some Java experience, so much of what you see in this course will be stuff you already know. But stay with it, because even inside the things that you already know, you may find something that's a surprise, or completely new, or different than you thought it was. And it's better to find out the surprises here than on the exam. This is not really a tutorial. That is, if someone has never seen Java before, this is not the course they're after. Everything you need is presented in detail, but things are not necessarily presented in a way or in an order that you can learn Java from scratch. While I'm explaining the details of one area of Java, I assume that you have an acquaintance with some of the other areas and don't explain them. I eventually do get to everything and explore it all in detail, but this course is not aimed at the rank beginner. Let me say this. If you are a rank beginner and you decide to go ahead with this course, that's okay too. You can do it. Just get a good reference and keep it at your elbow. You should already know a bit about Java programming, so I'm not going to bother showing you how to install Java. There are several ways of doing it anyway. If you need to shop for an IDE or an editor and a compiler, you'll need to find links to them, and you can find them here at my website. I constantly monitor this site to keep it up to date, so it should have what you're looking for. It's a fact that the only way to learn a programming language is to write programs. If you come across something in here that you've never dealt with before, stop and write a program using it. It doesn't have to be a huge program, just something that makes it possible for you to experiment with a thing that you're trying to figure out. If you do it that way, you'll understand how it works in such detail that no question about it will throw you. I include lots of examples through this course because that's the best way to describe some things. And the source code of all the examples comes with the course. You can use these as a jump start to do your own experimenting. But my way of doing things is just that. It's my way. You have your own way and you should write the code the way you understand it. Always. No two programmers work alike, so you'll probably find things in my code that you don't like, and that's okay. The questions and problems on the exam can fool you and cause you to get confused unless you are very clear on the subject. Don't let anything slip by. Make sure you understand the whole thing. This is a short course for such a lot of material, so don't let any point, no matter how small it may seem, get by you. Almost anything in here could show up as a question on the exam. Oh, I put in some background information from time to time, but only when I think it's necessary for you to understand a concept. I mean, you don't really have to know anything about the history of C and Java, for example, but some things only make sense if you know where they come from. I've been teaching Java for several years, and I've found that there are certain things that need repeating. So you'll find that some things seem to pop up more than once in different contexts. These are not necessarily the hard parts, but they're the parts that people tend to forget when they're looking in a different area. Then again, some things I will explain just once and move on. If you want it again, you can look at the lesson again. The fact is that nothing in this course is more important or less important than anything else. Any one of them is likely to be on the test. And if you know it, you'll get that question right. If you don't know it, you'll get it wrong. In the end, it's a count of the number of right answers, not whether you answered the important ones. All I'm saying is, don't let any of it slip by you. Understand it all.